everyone! Um, today is October the 17th, 2021. Um, my name is Elizabeth, this is Frizzy Lizzy Stitches, and today is Floss to 11! <laughs> Um, so first things first, huge thank you to everyone who has subscribed to this channel um, between last video and now we have hit a thousand subscribers. So um, it kind of doesn't feel real to me, um, <laughs> which is why I haven't like posted about it really. I mean, I shared it in my story on Instagram, but um, yeah, it's kind of surreal. So I have been watching YouTube for a very long time. I didn't ever think I would like make my own channel and put content on the interwebs like this, but here we are. So yeah, thanks for subscribing and uh, watching my content and commenting and interacting and being interested in what I have to show. So um, it's been two weeks since my last video. Um, oh, and another funny thing I actually wanted to mention. Uh, Shelby from Stitches by Shelby also reached a thousand subscribers and Shelby I am very sorry because Shelby was so supportive like I didn't even know I was getting a thousand subscribers like she was the one who messaged me and she was like you were like literally one away and then she got a thousand subscribers I did not say anything <laughs> so I'm a terrible friend um, but congratulations Shelby on your thousand subs as well <laughs> um, okay so yeah, it's been two weeks since my last video. Um, lots of, well, I don't know. I feel like I got a lot of stuff done, crafty-wise, but in the past few days, I have done diddly squat. <laughs> so we'll see when I get to that. But I'm currently holding Piper in my lap because I get very, um, I, I don't think nervous is the right word, but it takes me a minute to like get start talking for these things and um anyway holding a cat in your lap helps <laughs> she's being very quiet and dealing with it i don't know if there she is <laughs> she's being very sweet oh look at that beautiful face she got lots of love last week so thanks you guys <laughs> Um, helps her ego. I'm just kidding. She is a very spoiled cat. Um, but yeah, so I have, what, three, two, that's wrong. I have four whips. Three of them are cross stitch. I wrote, wrote my notes wrong. I have four whips to show you. Three of them are cross stitch and one of them is crochet. So we will be seeing Coraline today. Um, honestly, she's probably going to be in my thumbnail. So you probably already knew that when you clicked on this video. Okay, now she's ready to get up. Uh, but anyway, so yeah. One of those is a new start, which I actually started literally after I filmed my last video. Um, which is Halloween Quaker, if you watched last two weeks ago. Um, so yeah. Um, I have a couple other random non-stitchy things that I wanted to talk about. Um, just to kind of... I guess ease into the video, I guess, I suppose. Um, so, I guess the first thing that I really just want to complain <laughs> about. Uh, so, I live in an apartment, and there is a fire safety box that I guess there's like one per building, but I think it's supposed to like, I think it's connected to like the sprinkler system or something, um, the, sp the fire sprinklers. But anyway, the box on my building is literally right next to my unit. It like shares the same wall as my bedroom, like that wall right there. And um, it has been malfunctioning since I've lived here, which has been like a year or so. And it didn't do it for a very long time. Like pretty much all summer it didn't beep and it has started beeping again within the past like two or three weeks. And I've been talking to, you know, my apartment management and all that kind of stuff, but it's so annoying and uh, it used to go off at midnight while I was sleeping and I never knew like it looks like the box is locked but apparently it's not <laughs> um, I later was uh, taught by one of the maintenance people but needless to say um, they showed me how to like silence the alarm and which is great and everything except for that's just a band-aid solution <laughs> Um, 
but yeah so but instead of beeping at midnight for some reason it has switched to beeping at like 6 p.m so i that's basically what i'm welcome with when i come home every day and it's really dumb um i have bought earplugs in case it goes off while i'm sleeping and it hasn't in a while because like i said it's been going off 6 p.m instead of midnight but this morning it went off at like 6 30 or something and I was too tired and lazy to go outside and silence it, so I just popped my earplugs in, and I kid you not, <laughs> where, <laughs> okay, so wearing these earplugs actually gave me some pimples in my ears, and the pimple in this ear had turned into a scab, so when I took the earplug out of my ear this morning, there was blood on the earplug, and I'm like, this beeping is literally making my ears bleed, <laughs> um, anyway. That's enough of that. Ugh, it's so annoying though. Um, another thing, or another reason why I did not, well that's not a reason why I didn't stitch. The big reason why I didn't stitch this past week really is because we had a big presentation at work that was like Wednesday, Thursday. So th lots of long work hours this week. And then on Friday, and, uh, Nintendo released their Animal Crossing Direct. I'm a huge Animal Crossing fan. And it's basically like there's a bunch of new content it was like 20 minutes worth of new information and it was quite overload for me it was so much cool stuff and now i'm like ready to play this new update which doesn't come out until late november the 5th so i played a bunch of animal crossing last night and i'm probably going to continue playing a bunch of animal crossing until this update comes out so <laughs> but yeah excited about that there's like new furniture new kk slider songs new villagers, new characters, new hairstyles, like new everything. It's awesome. They brought back a bunch of old characters from older games. So I'm super excited. <laughs> um, but yeah, so enough of the non-stitchy stuff. Um, I don't know how interesting that is to some of you, but anyway. Um, I guess we can start with what I did first act since my last video, which would have been my new start for Halloween Quaker. So I, last week I had talked about like the flosses and how I wasn't sure like if I needed to cut them or like how I was supposed to like basically get them set up to use for my project. And I learned a lot of things. Um, <laughs> So first, I'm just gonna show you what I worked on um, to get that part out of the way, cause I did not work very much on it. I think I worked, yeah, I did like, this is like 35 minutes of work, but there's my teeny tiny little start. Um, this is on 40 Count Murky by Picture This Plus. And yeah, it's just a super tiny, I've never stitched on 40 Count, so these stitches are like super tiny. But um, it's a lot more, I thought that was a spider, if, <laughs> sorry. Um, it's a lot easier to, I feel like doing the one strand um, over two on 40 count than it is to do one strand over one on 25 count. Cause I don't know if you guys remember my garden party from Satsuma Street, I try to do it one over one. And I ended up not liking it, but this is a lot nicer. And it's so cool because it's just so tiny. And I'm also really dumb and can't do math apparently, which is funny because I have an engineering degree, so you would think I could do some math. But this is the entire piece of fabric, which I believe is a fat quarter. And turns out I only need like half of this. So I thought I was gonna be stitching it this way and it was gonna like take up the whole thing. But actually, I decided to start it this way because it's only going to come to over like like right here and then come down like maybe here or something like that. So anyway, kind of awesome that it's going to use less fabric than I thought because that just means I have like basically a fat eighth of um, murky that's going to be left over that I can use for something else. So yeah, but um, the floss. So last week... I had mentioned that I like took the floss off of the card that it came on and opened it up an extra time so that 
the length would be longer. And I very quickly learned that that is way too long <laughs> um, because you're stitching with one strand. I kind of, I think I, I knew that I wasn't going to be using the loop method with the variegated flosses, but I guess my brain didn't catch up. <laughs> and anyway, so I ended up putting them back the way they came and cutting them, cutting the loops at the bottom. So like when I showed this last week, um, it basically was like this plus like down to here or something like this long, <laughs> um, which if you're doing the loop method, that's a good length of floss. But I was not doing the loop method because this is variegated. So yeah, but anyway, and then um, I went ahead and put, I actually went ahead and put my needles and my scissors on here because I just thought that was cool. I've never st stitched a project with a floss ring, but I'm kind of liking it. So, anyway, but I put, um, I have a ton of DMC 310, so I went ahead and put this one on a card. You can't see it because my sweatshirt's dark. But, um, I have made this tag with my Cricut, and I actually bought this little hole punch, um, so that I could get a big enough hole to put the floss through. And I went ahead and just chopped this like I was doing single strand, because usually I would do loop method with DMC, but... This is one strand on 40 counts, so anyway, but yeah. <laughs> um, I think that I got a lot of people commenting about the floss card thing, so thanks for, um, <laughs> thanks for that. <laughs> um, uh, Liz from Elizabeth Ann Can Stitch actually sent me like a private video thing, like a video message on uh, Instagram, kind of like showing her fancy floss and like how you know she cuts it that cuts the loop at the bottom and stuff and it was really funny because when she sent it to me I was actually still at work and my watch kept going Elizabeth Ann sent you a video Elizabeth Ann sent you a video and I was like oh my gosh what is happening <laughs> and uh then I got home and saw what it was but yeah so thanks for all the tips about the floss I learned my lesson <laughs> um and I am excited to keep stitching on this and get to some other colors because clearly this is just like gray, basically. So, um, okay, let me put this back together. Oh, and I guess I could show the chart since, or not the chart, but the cover photo since I have it. Because usually I stitch digital patterns, but this is what this is going to look like. Um, so all I started was like this little motif and then like, the front, the top corner of this one. So, but yeah. Okay, let me get this away. Okay, so the next thing that I worked on, I feel like it was Coraline. I'll save Coraline to the end. Um, the next one I worked on was Cozy Cafe. Uh, so, the new part for the apple cider came out September the 25th, and so I stitched the apple cider, and the next part comes out on October the 25th. So that's like less than 10 days away. I'm really curious what it's gonna be. I think it's, I think I talked about this in my last video. I think it might be pumpkin spice latte, but I don't know if they'll use that for November, but yeah. So, um, okay, let me get this situated. I didn't unfold everything before. I kind of just brought my project bags in here and unzipped them. But this is what Cozy Cafe is looking like. Um, so, oh wait, I forgot. Well, the other one didn't have a last time because it just, it was a new start. But this is what this is supposed to look like. And this is what it looked like last time. <laughs> and this is what it looks like now. So I did the apple cider. And it was funny because while I was doing this, I was like, oh, this is going to take forever. Like, that has a lot of fill in. And so I think I started, like, with the little scallop trim at the bottom there. And then I kind of just outlined. I did the apple slice. And then I kind of, like, outlined the cup. And then I did the cinnamon stick. And kind of did everything except for the fill in. And then I did the fill in at the end. And then when I was done, I was like, oh, I'm done. Like, that was it. <laughs> and so then I just finished up the border uh, right here. So, I 
can't see when I do that. <laughs> but yeah, so there's apple cider. Um, yeah, so we have three drinks left. So I'm really excited to see this one come together. It's gonna look so cool when it's done. But yeah. So I spent the most time on this. Uh, over five days, I stitched nine hours and six minutes. Um, so yeah. And then when I wasn't working on this, I was working on Coraline. But like I said, I'm gonna save her for the end. I have one more cross stitch with to show. Um, let's see. Okay, uh, the last one is Lucky Nutcracker by Caterpillar Cross Stitch, and I'm keeping it in my very own handmade project bag. <laughs> um, and this one is still on the key snap because I intended to stitch more on this and it just didn't happen. Because like I said, this past week at work was kind of crazy and um, I didn't really have, whatever leisure time I did have after work, I was just too tired to stitch. I just lay down and I think I read my, I read a book a couple nights and the other nights I was just like laying there like, uh. <laughs> so anyway, but I worked on this for one day for uh, like an hour and a half. This is what, oh yeah, and the third part for this came out Friday. So this is what it is going to look like. And this is what it looks like the last time. And then this is what it looks like now. Um, not too different. I did fill in the whole bottom part of the tree. Um, and I don't think I actually added more any green to this section. It's possible. I'm not quite sure, to be honest. <laughs> um, but yeah. I love this pattern. It's absolutely adorable. But holy crap, there's so much like fill in color and it's not the most entertaining to stitch when you have like ginormous blocks of color so that's why i am so far behind on this so uh say lavi i suppose <laughs> um it's gonna be it's gonna be really cute when it's all done um there are a lot of people who are like customizing theirs and i kind of wish that i was doing like a different fabric or like picked my own flosses or something just so that it would be also uniquely mine but I don't I'm, at the, I'm too far into this tree to like try to change stuff so I'm but I, I did buy um I mentioned in my last video I wanted to do like pom-poms and sequins I did buy some pom-pom trim so I will show that when I get to haul but yeah not much else to look at here <laughs> so okay um, okay, Coraline. Okay, so I worked on Coraline for only three days. However, it felt like I worked on her all week and I also felt like I made a crap ton of progress. So I'm just gonna show her to you and then we can talk about what I did. <laughs> so here she is. Oh my God. <laughs> okay, so last time you saw her, she did not have arms. She did not have ears and she did not have hair. <laughs> she was just a body with a face um, and a head. So yeah, I uh, crocheted her some arms and attached them and then um, crocheted her some ears and attached those and then crocheted her hair. And it's kind of hard to tell because it's so dark um, behind her, but um, her hair is all one piece. It's kind of like, I guess like a wig situation, but it was funny because in the pattern, it literally just says, like after you crochet the hair, it just says, sew it on. It doesn't say how, or like give you any tips or anything like that, or like where to start. Or it just says like use pins to kind of like place the hair or kind of secure it where you want it to be and then just sew it on. So I had to like look up some videos of crocheting wigs to dolls because I had no idea where to even start. And frankly, I don't think I did a fantastic job. Um, I definitely did a job. <laughs> um, I'm not mad about it. She, uh, like if you see, she's kind of got this bump in the back of her head and that's because 
the wig that you crochet is basically like a rectangle with like some loose tassely bits on the end so that you can do like the side part thing and so that it will go around her ear like this part is separate from this part um but yeah so like i said she's got this weird bump in her on her hair kind of like she's got one of those bumpets on or something i don't know if anybody remembers those um but yeah but i'm not too mad about it because this pattern um the only things I have left are her dragonfly clip, which would go here, and then her rain jacket. And the rain jacket has a hood on it, so it'll kind of cover up this weird bump thing. And then you can also kind of see, like, on the top of her head, like, you can kind of see her head through the hair. But, like I said, I tried my best, and I'm not mad about how she looks. Like, I think she looks adorable, and I'm very proud of myself for making it this far. <laughs> um, Shelby from Stitches by Shelby showed in her last video that she was trying to crochet this little teddy bear for, um, uh, I guess, the sibling of the baby that her friend is about to... That was a really weird way to say it. Her friend is pregnant, and she was going to make a toy for her pregnant friend's already existing child <laughs> that's like probably like I don't know a toddler or something but anyway she was crocheting a teddy bear and she was like I can't give this to him because it's been such a struggle and it looks terrible and she, then she like shows this like teddy bear head and it's the cutest thing I've ever seen in my life <laughs> and um anyway she give she gave herself a lot of grief about it honestly Shelby it looks really cute um, even though the body is a little small for the head, <laughs> I would totally, like, that is the cutest thing. But, yeah, anyway. But I also, like, to go off of also what another complaint Shelby had about that project that she was doing, she bought this, like, fluffy yarn to make the teddy bear, and she was talking about how it's really hard to see your stitches, and that's absolutely right. I bought some, like, the Burnett Velvet, um, yarn because I was gonna make some scrunchies and the first time I used it I was like holy cow I cannot see what I'm doing because this stuff is so fluffy I mean it like looks nice but you really do have to feel what you're doing instead of look at what you're doing so yeah I digress <laughs> um, anyway but yeah this is Coraline I have no idea how much time I spent on her because I was not keeping track but um, I'm very happy so, like I said, I just have to do the dragonfly and her rain jacket, and then I think I need to add, like, the shoelaces to her shoes, and then she'll be done. So, and honestly, the part that's going to take the longest for that is the rain jacket, because it's just a lot of back and forth, back and forth, like making a, probably making, like, a rectangle type situation, so... But yeah, so here's Coraline. I gotta get a decent uh, thumbnail. I also like, I don't know. <laughs> uh, yeah, she's so cute. I'm very happy. Okay, um, let's see, haul. So it's really funny to me. So when I first started watching FossTube and people would show haul like every week, I was like, holy crap. These people are crazy. They're buying stuff all the time. And here I am showing some haul every two weeks. <laughs> so, anyway, I take back what I thought before I did this. <laughs> um, so I did buy a couple patterns. Um, one of them I will not be showing you because it is for a smalls exchange for Christmas. That is a surprise. And... It would be way too obvious. I mean, like, the pattern I bought has multiple things in it, but it still would just be obvious which one I picked. So, but I am going to show you this other pattern that I bought that is not for the Smalls Exchange. This is the Heart and Hand Halloween Square Dance number three. I think this just came out. I'm not sure. I think it was Galleria or something, but... Steph from Just Keep Stitching showed this in her video, and when she showed it, I was like, holy crap, those freaking pumpkins. Like, look at that one's teeth. Just think that's so funny. So, and it was funny because right after I thought that, she made the same comment about how cute its teeth are. But, yeah, I I really bought this for this one, but um, the, re the other two are really cute as well. So, um, don't know when this will happen, but I have it now, so... Oh, and look at this white one. He's, like, sleeping. Or, like, just content. Oh, 
Anyway, super cute. Um, and then, I, so I got this from Fat Quarter Shop. And I also bought some fabric to make a project bag. So I'm planning on doing like the same pattern that um, Elizabeth Ann has a tutorial for on her channel. Um, but I bought some of the Tula Pink uh, Alice in Wonderland collection fabric. So I bought half a yard of each. Um, so hopefully I don't mess up when I cut because this is like just enough fabric. Uh, but they're kind of folded in with each other. So the first one is this purple with the, they're Cheshire cats, but honestly they remind me of Piper. It's like, to me, it's like galaxy cat or something, <laughs> but yeah, so I got this one. And then the other one I got that I'm planning, I'm planning on using this one for the outside and I'm planning on using this for the inside. So I don't know specifically what this, um, what each of these patterns are called, but this one is kind of like from the beginning of the story where she's like drowning in the water after going through that little door. So I just love this. I love the duck and the dodo. You got the drink me cup, this little crab. It's just really pretty. There's so much detail. So yeah, I think this will look really nice. This being the inside and this being the outside. So there's kind of them together. But, and then I also bought a zipper to go with it. So I got this green. It's a little more avocado-y looking than I thought it was. I thought it was gonna be more like lime green, but I, th I think it will match this pretty well. Let me take it out of the bag so there's not a glare. But yeah, I feel like I feel like this will look pretty good eh. with, let me, can I do this? There we go. Yeah, I think this green will look really good with um, these two patterns. So I'm really excited. I have no idea when I'll get around to this, but um, I definitely am gonna put my Alice in Wonderland project in here. And then I also have um, a little white rabbit needle minder that I'm gonna put on that project too. So it'll be all Alice in Wonderland landed, land out. It'll be all Alice out. <laughs> um, but yeah, okay. Let me get this folded back. I'll have to do it properly later, but this will be good enough for now. Okay, um, so the next thing I bought, I made a purchase from Hobby House Needleworks because I needed some 32 count vintage country mocha and that was the only place I could find it. Um, I have heard of Hobby House Needleworks but I had never purchased from them and I straight up went to Google and was like 32 count vintage country mocha and her store actually popped up in the search results. So if you haven't seen vintage country mocha then you missed out on cross stitch 101 because this is like a very, <laughs> this is like, I feel like everybody needs to stitch on this to like induct themselves into the stitchy world or something. I don't know what I'm saying, but anyway, I really like it. Um, and I got a fat quarter of it because it's just so useful for so many things. So yeah, and then while I was also on the Hobby House Needleworks website, I bought some Lady Dot Creates uh, pom pom trim. That looks terrible with the glare. <laughs> um, but yeah. So I've never used this stuff. And frankly, I haven't looked at it. I think you can. Um, so this is what it looks like. And I think I've seen people like cut the pom poms off of this like little ribbon thing and um that that was kind of my uh, plan or intention when I bought it because where did it go because I'm thinking that when I'm like done stitching this I'm going to kind of have these pom-poms I haven't actually done this yet <laughs> um I kind of want to put these pom-poms this is so hard to, sh to practice how it will look 
Okay, so I'm kind of thinking that I will kind of attach the pom-poms on the tree to give it some dimension and kind of bring more interest to, since it's just all flat stitching. But yeah, now, now this is all like <laughs> unwound. I think this is, what did she say? Two yards of pom-pom trim. So definitely will not be using all of it for that. And now I will have some extra, I'm sure. So yeah. But I, that's what I got from Hobby House Nina Works. Some vintage country mocha and some lady dot. So, yep. And then I already showed this, but I bought this little hole punch so that I can make my own floss drops. Cause I already have a bunch of paper cardstock, but I also bought myself a tag maker because I've wanted one for a long time. My grandma and mom both have one and they come in so handy at Christmas time. And I, like every time I wanted to buy one, it was the holiday season and they were sold out. And I was at Joann's the other day and they had it and I was like, I'm getting this now before they don't have it anymore in two months. <laughs> so yeah, I didn't bring it here to show, but I mean, it looks, it looks like this, it's just bigger and it punches out a tag shape. So, um, and it actually came with even, I think they're called grommets, the little like um, metal ring that goes in the hole of the tag so that I guess like the string you put through doesn't tear the tag. So yeah, I got that. And that was all I had to show. <laughs> um, this video I think is a tad bit longer than usual, not really. Um, but yeah, so my plans are to keep stitching on Lucky Nutcracker and just keep making progress. I'm not worried about being caught up, but I do want to keep stitching on it. And then um, the other thing that I want to do is finish Coraline. I want to give her a jacket and her her iconic dragonfly uh, barrette and some shoelaces. So yeah, hopefully I can do that. And I'm going to play a bunch of Animal Crossing because the, I'm just so excited. Uh, but yeah. So I thought I would end my video with a question to you guys. Um, except for I didn't think about what the question was going to be. I thought it would be fun if I had like a question of the day or whatever. And then you guys could have something to talk about in the comments. Um, but now that I'm saying it, I can't think of a question. Oh, okay, I've got one. What are you going to dress up for as for Halloween if you're dressing up? And are you more of a um, go out and party kind of person or stay at home and watch scary movies? So I personally will be going to a party on the Friday before, but on actual Halloween, I'll probably just be watching scary movies. So, and for costumes, uh, me and my boyfriend Bobby are going to be dressing up as Fred and Daphne from Scooby-Doo. So, yeah, you definitely will see pictures because I love Halloween and showing off costumes. So, yeah. So tell me what you're dressing up as and tell me what your favorite, like, Halloween night activity is. So, yep. And I will see you guys hopefully in two weeks, which actually will be Halloween. Um, we'll see if I actually film that day. There's a very, there's a slim chance that I could film the next week. So... Yeah, I'll probably keep that updated on Instagram. So if you're not following me on Instagram, here's my handle. Um, and it'll be linked in the description, as always. So yeah. Okay, well, I'm not going to ramble anymore. Um, have a great week, day, night, whatever time of day it is for you. And I hope to see you next time. Okay, bye. Bye.